In 2016, I applied for a US visit visa. At the time, I think I had just completed university. And guys, I was denied. That was the first time I experienced that thing where they say, you are beginning to see butterflies. It's like, I didn't know whether to go right or left. In my local language, we say not enter, enter, It's like suddenly you're drunk. I was so sure I was going to get the visa and I was denied. And that was the first time I had ever applied for any type of visa. So I told myself that if I'm to apply for a US visa visa again, I'll make sure I understand everything and then I'll apply. And now to the glory of God, myself, my husband and my son, we've been given a five year US visit visa. Guys, and it's easy. You only have to understand what I'm about to share with you today. So if you want to know how to apply for a US visit visa, especially for those that are in the UK, this video is for you. So stay tuned. <laughs> so hi guys, I'm sure that you can see that the environment is different, yes. I'm not filming in my UK studio anymore, I'm filming in the US, yes. I'm here happily in the US. If you haven't watched my welcome vlog to the US, I'll leave it here so you can watch. Again guys, the excitement of seeing my family, I've been shouting and singing and all that. I've lost my voice, okay, but I'm very sure that I'm still audible enough and then you can hear me. Like I said, I've been denied a US visa visa before. I even thought it would affect my UK visa application when I was initially moving to the UK. But it was not a bother at all. So if you've ever been denied a visa, it is not a problem, okay? If you have been banned, it's different. But if you have ever been refused, just a refusal, it's not a problem at all. Just make sure you understand what I'm about to share. So I'll advise that you take your pen and your paper and you write down that everything I'm about to say, okay? So I would always advise that if you're lucky and you move to the UK and you're on a skilled worker visa as a care assistant, as a doctor, as a nurse, or as a dependent, or even as a student, try and travel, okay? If you keep traveling, you build your immigration history. It makes it easy easier to get visas to other countries when you're applying in the future. So it's very good. You get to see new things, you get to see new ways of doing things and then it builds you up as a person. So I always advise that if you are on a UK visa visa, don't wait for as long as I did. I waited until five years to travel outside the UK. You don't have to wait for that long. You can travel, okay? Travel anywhere that you want, okay? So far as you're doing it the right way, you're doing it legally, okay? To apply for US visa visa, the visa category is called a B2 visa, okay? They have a B1 visa that's for business and they have the B2 that's a non immigrant tourist visa that you can apply okay the form that you fill to get this visa is called the DS-160 form I'll leave a link to it so that you can just click on it and it'll take you to the official DS-160 form and then you can apply when you get the DS-160 form so for us we have to fill three different forms myself my husband and my son initially when you click the link you create an account with your email and then they'll give you a code that anytime you want to access the form you can use that code and your email to access the form so you don't have to complete the DS-160 form at a go guys the form is quite lengthy it took a couple of days or weeks to finish apply we initially started and then we bought the house then we stopped okay we had spent too much money with the furnishing of the house so we decided to postpone our travel then the form expired if you do not attend the form after a certain number of days it will expire so you have to start the whole application again but like now let's say you intend to travel in the next month or so you can start filling the form now always remember that wherever you reach on the form you save and continue you save and continue the form is quite lengthy and when it comes to the way the form looks i actually think that the gov.uk forms are much easier and much clearer than the u.s forms they ask for so many things and then they'll also ask you for your intention what are you going to do who are you going to visit then they'll ask you for the details of the person you're going to visit so guys make sure that whoever you put there has legal residency in the u.s okay don't put anybody there who's an illegal immigrant in the u.s you're going to put yourself and that person in trouble okay so it doesn't have to be your father it doesn't have to be your mom it can't even be your friend guys they ask so many questions they even ask me of all email addresses that i've ever used all your telephone numbers that you've used all my social media handles and guys so if you know that you're the kind of person that writes very nasty things or not so pleasant things on social media or things that are not really you know you had to make sure that you do the cleaning before you apply for this visa honestly i had to go back to my youtube to check if i've said anything negative about the us before i put my youtube name there because i was really scared because guys they want to do their research to know the exact person that they are allowing into their country so you may have to make sure you're doing all that so you finish filling the form and then now they're going to show you the documents that you're supposed to bring anyways but i also noted down all the documents that myself i submitted that my husband submitted and that i submitted on behalf of my son as well so that if you have younger ones as well you know what to submit for them okay so after filling the form you book an appointment so i'll also leave another link in the description where that link will show you the visa appointment wait time so let's say you're in london if you put london in it'll show you how long you usually have to wait until you get an appointment date in some countries it's over a year 
before you get an appointment date. But in the UK, it's not like that. But in the UK, they have two embassies. There's one in Northern Ireland, Belfast, and there's one in London. So I think the London one, the appointment wait time was shorter, but the Belfast one was a bit far away. However, we still wanted Belfast because I wouldn't want to travel all of us to London, you know, the cost and everything. So another thing is, if you're in Northern Ireland, you're most likely not going to find any appointment date when you choose Belfast because they'll say it's fully booked. But what I would advise is that you call them. When we were applying, it said that there was no appointment date in Belfast. However, I phoned them and then I was, long story short, they showed me what to do on the form, on the website, and I was able to choose my date and they say a time that I want, the date and the time that I want. And that's the same one that they gave us. Okay, so if you're in Northern Ireland or you want to do your interview in Belfast, but there's no slot, just call the embassy. Okay, they'll pick up or the lady who picked me was really nice. They'll show you what to do. So that's it. And then you have to also take a passport picture. When you go to any photo studio and you tell them you're using it to apply for a US visit visa, they know the dimensions and everything. But always make sure that you don't just get the hard copy, you get the soft copy in your email as well because you upload the soft copy on your DS-160 form, okay? And then you print out the completed DS-160 form. Guys, listen, you print out the completed DS-160 form, the confirmation page, and then you submit the hard copy of the passport pictures as well. And these are the other documents that we submitted, okay? So applying for a visit visa to any of these, you know, countries, there are several things that they want you to prove. And it's the same as the UK, honestly. So let me also issue a disclaimer real quick. I'm not an immigration advisor. This is purely based on my experience alone, okay? Do not take this as professional immigration advice, okay? Seek professional immigration advice if you need one. So there are a few things that the embassy would want you to prove, okay? You have to prove the reason for your visit, okay? I said I was coming to visit my family. So prove the reason for your visit, okay? Another thing is that you have to prove that you have strong ties to your country of residence or to your home country that will compel you to go back. So the reason why I was denied when I applied for a visit visa in Ghana was because at the time I was a young girl. I didn't have any job at the time even. I was now about to start my national service and then I didn't have any ties. Nothing showed I didn't have a husband, I didn't have a, a child. Nothing that strong ties to Ghana that would mean that when I come to the US I'll go back. Okay, no doubt that you go back because you come here and you see how beautiful the place is. You'd want to have a lot of money so you want to stay here illegally and that's what they don't want. And you also have to prove that when you come you're not going to be a burden on the US government. You're not going to be a burden on anybody. You'll be able to take care of yourself when you're here. Okay, so how do you prove your reasons? So for me, I asked my dad to send me an invitation letter. Honestly, I showed him how to write the invitation letter for me. Okay, so you see that invitation letter video that I have on this channel. That's the same one that we used. We just changed the details. So guys, watch that video. Oh, I'll leave the draft here so you can download as well, okay? And then just input your details. So I showed him. So he will now put his details as the person inviting myself, my husband, and his grandchild to come and visit him, okay? And obviously, we told him the dates that he should put there because that's the dates that we had put on the DS-160 application form. Okay, so make sure that the dates are telling. The honest truth is, when we got to the embassy, I didn't even submit the invitation letter that my dad gave me, but we still got the visa. So having an invitation letter is not a must, okay? You can come here and say that you want to visit California, you want to go to Hollywood and you'll still be approved and obviously my dad is a legal resident in the US we had a copy of his green card to show that he's a resident here we had a copy of his passport to show that he's a resident here I had my birth certificate with his name on it to show that he's really my dad I'm not lying so that was to prove but if you be I know somebody from the UK as well who's a nurse who came here to visit his friend and it's just a friend so you don't have to prove their ties okay with this person so if it's your friend you could just write your friend there they don't expect you to have a birth certificate with your friend's name on it okay so it's what you write that you have to prove and then to prove that we have strong ties is back in UK meaning that when we come we'll go back I got a letter from my employer guys it was such a short letter just with the company that I work for a letter head to whom it's my concern we acknowledge that Nanel and T blah 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 she's a registered nurse here you know so they stated that I started working for, with them from 2018 I end this this per hour it's called an introductory letter or something like that every company has a way they do it so ask your admin or your company's HR and they will give you this my husband had to get this as well okay so that is very important okay prove that you have ties in the UK that will compel you to come back they know that if you have a good job paying you 12 pound an hour 16 pound an hour 20 pound an hour you're gonna go back because you have a good job right another way that we proved ties to the UK was we submitted our a letter from our solicitor showing that we own a house okay guys do not let this be a bother everybody that we went for the um, appointment with you know when you go for the appointment I'll come to that later when we go for the appointment there are several people there and most of the people that we spoke to in fact everybody there that we went to meet got the visa that day there were about 20 people ahead of us and they all got the visa the u.s embassy in belfast is so small that when somebody is refused you hear it even i could hear some of the questions that other people were being asked and most of them were international students and they all got their visas to come and visit the u.s everybody got their visa so if you have the right document you don't have to own a house in the uk you will still get the visa so don't let the fact that i said that we 
submitted a letter showing that we own a house, make it look like you will not get it, okay? You will get it if you have all other things to prove that you have ties to the UK that will compel you to go back, okay? So for our situation, we showed a letter from my employer on the company's letterhead, signed and dated by my manager. And then we also submitted a letter from our solicitor showing that we own a house and then other documents showing that we own a house. And then we submitted three to six months signed and dated bank statement. Don't just print out bank statements from your bank app to show that you have money. No, go to the bank and get it signed and dated. If you go to Barclays, for those who save in Barclays, they have a machine inside most of their offices where when you print out the payslip, it's already signed and dated, okay? Another thing that we submitted also was our payslips. Also to show that we make money. We make this money every month. So we're definitely going to come back to our jobs. Okay, so I submitted six months bank statement, six months payslips. My husband submitted six months bank statement, six months payslips and employer letters to show that we have good jobs and we'll go back, okay? One more thing that we submitted that's also very important to show that we have ties to the UK and that we'll go back is our BRP. We are legal residents in the UK. So we're not going to come here and not return. We have legal permission to stay in the UK. So we're definitely going to go back. So if you have a BRP and you have a good job, it's more than enough to apply for a US visit visa, okay? Even if you rent a house, your tenancy agreement to show that you have a place to stay with your name on it is enough to show that you have a, a house that you've rented out. Let's say it's a one-year contract or two-year contract or whatever. You have a good job. These things are more than enough, okay? And that's it, okay? So there are other few other things that we added. So I wrote every single thing down, okay? So let me list down the documents that myself i submitted okay so one i submitted a copy of the completed ds160 form remember i told you that the ds160 form is application form for the us that's how they call it so when you finish completing it you have to print it out okay and then we also submitted passport photos you also have to have a soft copy in your email right so we submitted the hard copy of the passport photos the same one that we uploaded the soft copy of on the ds160 form and then we also submitted our appointment confirmation page so when they confirm your appointment date they'll give you an appointment confirmation we have to submit that paper as well you need it so that's number three and the fourth thing is pay slips and then you need a passport a valid passport okay so if your passport is expiring please renew your passport usually they say if you have three to six months you know extra before it's expiry that's fine so we make sure our passports were in date and not expiring soon so a valid passport and then previous u.s visa for my husband he visited the u.s some years ago with his family that was way before we met so he also had to submit the passport that had that visa in it if you have previously visited the u.s it's even a plus for you especially if you did not overstay you can submit that as well and I also submitted a letter from my employer, you know, and then also bank statement stamped and dated six months, my UK biometric residence permit, and then proof of ownership of the house, our marriage certificate. Okay, so I said I was traveling with my husband and my son. Okay, so what's the proof that he's really my husband? So we submitted our marriage certificate, okay, and then his pay slips, a letter from his employer, his bank statement six months, and then a letter from our solicitor, that's the same thing, proof of ownership of the house, and then his DS1 60 form and then his appointment confirmation form so for my son this is what we submitted for those that have younger ones his passport his birth certificate to show that we are indeed his parents and then his uk residence permits okay so if you have a child who was born in the uk and you've not gotten a brp for your, your child yet you cannot travel with the child because you may not be able to enter the uk okay with a child if there's no brp even if you were born there you need a brp or british passport to enter so we had to make sure we got him a brp because you remember he's already visited ghana so you need a brp to enter the uk again okay and then his ds160 form and then his appointment confirmation letter as well so guys that is all so these are all the forms that we submitted okay when we got to the appointment you first of all go through the security check you know us and their security check to check everything there were cameras everywhere and then we're ushered into like a sort of like a hall right when they mention your name you go to the desk like the, the like the way the bank tellers are positioned you go there and then you submit all these documents you can submit as many documents as you want okay so we submitted all our documents and then they took it to go through they actually did take their time to go through we were there for a while and that's one thing i like this process of visa application better than how i applied when i was in ghana because that one the counselor or the counselor whoever however they are called just called me i went there he opened my passport said a few things and denied me the visa without even taking time to go through the documents but here they sat down and they went through all the documents that we gave them every single one of them they went through it well so after they go through the documents then we will usher us into another cubicle where there's only one counselor and this counselor will ask you questions so these are the questions that we were asked because we are family and we were planning on traveling together we all went together they didn't interview me separately and interview my husband separately what did they ask me they asked me what i'm going to do in the us i told them 
They asked me, who am I going to see? I told them. They asked me the kind of work that the person I'm going to see does. I told them. They asked me the kind of work that I do. And this whole time, this person was going through my application form, okay? And then they asked me a few more questions. What time do we intend to go? Blah, blah, blah. And one amazing thing about US visa visa application is usually they give you five years, guys. Five years. It's not like the UK where you, you get only six months. So I can come here until 2028 without applying for any visa again together with my husband and my son. And another thing is they let you know whether your visa was successful there and then. So they told me, congratulations, uh, your US visa has been approved. And then you give them an address to deliver your passport with a visa or it depends on what you chose when you were booking the appointment. So you can either let them deliver it to you in your house where you pay something extra or they'll give you a paper with the address of the post office where you can go for your passport with your visa. Guys, that is it. And we all got five good years. So that's it. Okay, they didn't ask us any complex questions. Know that, just be honest in your application. Everything you're stating make sure that you, it's in your head as well so that when they ask you it's not that you're coming to fumble if you've ever been denied a visa do not deny i stated it there they asked me whether i've ever been denied a, UK, a u.s visa i stated it there that you guys you denied my visa in 2016 you told me that i'm not going to come back do not lie be honest okay my circumstances have changed i'm married now i have a child i have a job in the uk i'm a legal resident of the uk they know that i'll definitely travel to the u.s and come back and that is why they approved it so guys, explore. Don't just stay in the UK for five years. The reason why I stayed this long is one, initially I was still scared and I didn't have the right information. So I wanted to take my time. That's why I took this long. And then COVID happened. And then I got married. And then I had a baby. So like things kept happening to push my coming backwards. But now guys, I'm here and I'm having fun. The US is nice, guys. Not just the US alone. Travel. If you have family in Canada, Australia, wherever, just get to know the right information and then travel, okay? So thank you so much for watching. Bye.